question. We maybe have time for one or two other questions if anybody has one. Mr. Morris, do you, do you, in response to Senator Moran's question, are you saying you believe there are states that reimburse the total cost of a critical access hospital's operation? Well, no, sir. What I was what I was saying is that um, uh, because and Sean can correct me if I get this wrong, um, you know when you when you set the the cost based reimbursement rate, it's based on historical costs, um, and we just see some fluctuations from state to state in in what that initial base is. Um, but it's 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 more complicated than that, and I I I can get back to you with more. Well, I, I think we expect you to get back okay. to us on that, but I think the point's well made that. These rural hospitals are not in the profit-making business, even if they get 100 percent of the 101 percent of the allowable reimbursement. But if there are states that have a formula that allows that, we'll be anxious to see which states are doing that and how they figured out how to calculate everything that is spent by the hospital to operate into their their cost basis. And, and to respond to Mr. Cassidy's question too, I would say that that. We do have examples of, of hospitals, even with low volumes, that, that have been able to make it work. I mean, I think it, it really is situationally dependent. I mean, there is a base level of volume you need. I agree with that. Um, but we've got some success stories out there uh, where folks have been able to bring primary care and align the physicians and the hospitals in a way, figure out what lines of service they can get into that makes sense for that community, arrange relationships with upstream providers that make it work. And so what we'd like to do is use our funding to sort of be the, the connecting of the dots between that, uh, identify those models, and, and maybe replicate them in other communities. All right. Mr. Cavanaugh, yes, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for uh, helping me ask my question, uh, and I appreciate the answer. Um, this is a home health care question. Uh, many, some of our hospitals, more, fewer than used to, provide home health care services because they can't afford to. But the Affordable Care Act includes a provision that requires Medicare beneficiaries to have a face-to-face -face, uh, encounter with a physician who certifies the need uh, for the home health care services. The implementation of this face-to-face -face requirement raises lots of concerns with home health care providers, hospital-based or otherwise. Uh, and the documentation that's necessary, it, it sure seems to the providers, is unclear. And the, the backlog and, and of audits is increasing. Uh, there's a real uncertainty as to what the CMS standard is for providing satisfactory face-to-face uh, -face encounter. Um, most of the appeals have been overturned in favor of the home health care provider. Uh, but my, my question is, do you see this as a problem? Does the CMS have a plan to respond to clear up the confusion, provide certainty, and reduce the backlog? Yes, Senator. I, th I think you've put your finger on a r challenge that we've been taking on head on. The first thing is in rulemaking last year, we simplified. As you're, you're correct that the Affordable Care Act created the face-to-face -face standard. Our initial rulemaking, in addition, required a narrative from the physician, a narrative writing, which uh, providers found ambiguous. And um, so we withdrew that requirement. So we still have the face-to-face -face requirement, but not the requirement for a narrative description of the need. Um, we continue to have dialogue with the home health industry to make sure they understand what we're looking for. We um, are exploring avenues. Uh, personally, I'm very interested in finding a way to facilitate people making the documentation. Because as you say, there are a lot of auditor reviews of these, and it, some get overturned, but many are upheld. Even when they're upheld, it's often about the documentation and not about whether the service was needed, whether it was provided. I mean, granted, there's fraud. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a lot of services that were truly needed, truly provided, but poorly documented. And I'm trying to find out if there's anything the agency, any role we can play to facilitate that without facilitating bad behavior by a subset of the industry. Uh, I thank you for that answer. I appreciate your attitude and approach toward attempting to solve this. And it is finding that place in which you don't punish those who are doing the right thing. And you do punish or prevent those who do, who do bad things. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh,